It's time for the only podcast dedicated to spaghetti westerns and the people who made them. Join hosts Jay Jennings and Tom Betts for the Once Upon a Time in Spaghetti Westerns podcast, which starts now. Ah, hello and welcome to episode 102 of the Spaghetti Westerns podcast. I'm Tom Betts, your host. Uh, welcome again to season five. This is episode two. Last week was episode one with the great Leonard Mann, and that was a fantastic interview. It was right up there with the Hammer uh, interview. So uh, this week we're going to talk about uh, the history of the Spaghetti Westerns. We'll continue on with two mafia men in the far west. Also known as Two Gangsters in the Far West, Franco and Ciccio. Uh, we're going to talk about Peter Martel, which Leonard Mann talked about a little bit last week. And then we'll also talk about who are those guys, Remo Capitani. If the name might not be familiar, but the face will be. He was in a plethora of spaghetti westerns. Uh, film of the week will be Beyond the Law, sometimes overlooked Lee Van Cleef. Spaghetti Western, and we'll have the weekly news, and we'll have a few obits that we'll catch on, catch up on since the end of season four and the beginning of season five. So let's get started with two mafia men in the far west. Let me grab all the information here for you. Okay, this is uh, the Italian title is Dewey Mafiosi Nel Far West. Uh, the Spanish title is Dos Pistoleros and Los Pistoleros de la Muerte. Again, it's two gangsters in the far west and two mafia men in the far west were the English titles. Uh, it's a 1964 Italian-Spanish co-production. Came out the same year as Fistful of Dollars, but it's completely different. Uh, directed by Giorgio Simonelli. Screenplay is by Marcello Ciorciolini and Giorgio Simonelli. Leo, Leonardo Martin Mendez. Uh, cinematography is by Juan Julio Baina. It's an Eastman color and widescreen. Music is by Giorgio Fabor with a couple of uh, songs in there. Always got to have some songs in the early Spaghetti Westerns. And the cast is comprised of Franco Capone, uh, who is Franco Frankie, uh, Ciccio Capone, Ciccio and Gracia. Betty White is played by Helene Chanel. Rio, played by Fernando Sancho. Ramirez is Aroldo Thierry. Some of the more uh, common faces that you'll see that appeared in later spaghettis are Ramon, played by Adriano Micantoni. And Re Rio's henchmen, Ignacio Spala, Mario Brega, Enrico Chiapa Fredo. Uh, Pablito is played by Jose Torres. And Colonel Peabody is played by Alfredo Rizzo. Uh, for those who just can't wait to see this uh, on Blu-ray or DVD, I'm sorry, it's only available on Italian DVD, uh, which came out in 2010, and there is a VHS Italian copy floating around someplace. Uh, the st story goes as such. Two elderly cousins, Franco and Ciccio Capone, played by Franco Franchi and Ciccio and Gracia, own a farm in Texas and discover a gold mine on their property. As soon as the news comes out, the two are besieged by a gang of the notorious bandit Rio, played by Fernando Sancho, who wants to know where the mine is located. In the shootout that follows, two older cousins are killed without revealing the location of the mine. But before they die, Ciccio Capone instructs his aide Ramon, Adriel Micantoni, to find their grandchildren. Franco and Ciccio living in Sicily and bring them to America. Ramon locates the two and takes them to Puerca Vaca. Once in Texas, the two manage to scare away Guercio, the right arm henchman of Rio during a shootout and thus are elected co-sheriffs. After many adventures, the two manage to find out where their grandparents had hidden the map to the mine. The discovery involves the whole population of the town and Franco and Ciccio, who become rich, decide to donate the mine to the town. Uh, this is available on YouTube if you want to see it there, but it's only in Italian. 
Uh, Franco and Ciccio, we've gone over before, but then we'll probably dedicate a, an entire episode to them, unfortunately, in the future. But uh, for right now, Franco Franchi was born in 1928 and died in 1992. Uh, Ciccio Ingracio, his comedy partner, was born in 1922 and died in 2003. Uh, they were a comedy team particularly popular in the 1960s and 1970s. Their collaboration began in 1954 in the theater and ended with Franke's death in 92. The two made their cinema debuts in 1960 with the film Apopmento uh, Ischia. They remained active until 1984 when their last film together, Chaos, was shot. Although there were some interruptions in 1973 and from 1975, 1980. Together, they appeared in 112 films, and the pair were favorites of the blue-collar workers of Italy, but are hard to take for more sophisticated audiences. This was Franco and Ciccio's first spaghetti western. Unfortunately, it won't be their last. This plays more like 1956 Partners, the American film with Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis, than their later spaghetti western par parodies as they play the aged uh, Franco and Ciccio in the beginning, and then are uh, superseded by the younger grandsons in the later parts of the film. Uh, we get the comedic duo playing double roles, full of slapstick antics and times and lines that are mostly funny to the Italian audiences, but not too much to the rest of the world. Several of the Spanish character actors seen here would be regulars in the spaghetti western genre, including Fernando Sancho, Helene Chanel, Adriano Micantoni, Pedro Sanchez, Mario Brega, Enrico Chiapafredo, Jose Torres, Alfredo Rizzo, and Edith Peters, released almost the same time as Fistful of Dollars. Uh, let's go over a couple of the other people in our actor bios. Betty White was played by Helene Chanel. Born Helene Chanel Stoliarov on June 2nd, 1941 in Deauville, Calvados, France. She is the sister of Nicole Stoliarov. Helene, Helene is of Russian heritage and was a retired model, photo novello and film actress. She appeared in over 50 films from 1959 to 1977. She chose the stage name Helene Chantel or Chanel, but an Italian publicity agent misspelled it as Chanel, C-H-A-N-E-L, and it stuck. Chanel appeared in six Euro Westerns, A Dollar of Fear in 1960, Two Mafia Men in the Far West, 64, Shimango in 67, Death Rides Along or Alone in 1967, Killer Caliber 32 in 67, where she's credited as Cheryl Morgan, and two Ringos from Texas in 67. Ramirez is played by Aroldo Thierry. Aroldo Thierry was born in Corgliano, Calabro, Calabria, Italy on August 28, 1917. He was the son of writer Vincenzo Thierry, who was born in 1995 and died in 1970. And he was a theater, film, TV actor. He moved to Rome in eight, at 18 to study law at the university, and in the meantime, was approached to begin an acting career and enrolled in the Academia Nazionale di Arte Dramatica. Silvio Diomico is the one who uh, told him to go to into acting. He graduated in 1938 and almost immediately made his debut in theater and in film. He became a noted comic and married fellow actress Giuliano Logiosi in 1940, who was born in 1940, and they were together from 1989 to 2006. Together, they formed a stage company in 1965, and the couple was very active in multiple projects in theater, radio, and TV. Thierry appeared in six Euro Westerns, A Dollar of Fear in 1960, The Magnificent Three in 61, the Terrible Sheriff in 62, Two Mafia Men in the Wild West in 64, Two Sergeants of General Custer in 65, and the TV film Don't Sing, Shoot in 1967. 
Uh, one of the things I look for in spaghetti westerns are faces that are out of place, uh, nationalities that are out of place, or the curious names of people that I want to investigate. And this one is Edith Peters. She hasn't got a starring role, but she plays a black woman and she looked very familiar. Edith Arlene Peters was born in Santa Monica, California on April 14, 1926. The four of five sisters. Her sisters, Virginia, Maddie, and Anne, were, were known as the Peters sisters. She later sang in a duo with her sister Joyce, also known as the Peters sisters. The Peters sisters performed at Wrigley Field in Los Angeles at the, at the first Cavalcade of Jazz concert in 1945. All the sisters moved to Italy during the 1950s and continued their act in Italian nightclubs and ballrooms. Edith died in LA on October 28, 2000. She was 74. In 1958, Edith married her Italian agent, Silvio Catalano, and appeared in movies, commercials, and TV dramas. Edith appeared in one other Euro Western, The Tramplers, in 1966 as Emma. Okay, now let's move along to uh, whatever became of. Okay, whatever became of Peter Martell, uh, Leonard Mann mentioned Peter last week, and I thought I would investigate him a little bit more since he's uh, was a character actor and star in the Euro Westerns, and I've always liked him. He ranks up there with uh, some of the better uh, Italian stars, as far as I'm concerned, in the genre. He was born Pietro Martellanza in Bolzano, South Tyrol, Italy on September 30th, 1938. At the age of 17, he left school and traveled to Hamburg, Germany on a Swedish cargo ship as a dishwasher. Leaving Hamburg, he arrived at Katolika, where he got a job as a bouncer in a nightclub. He then won the Mr. Italia contest. An admirer of his, of his invites him to Milan and also gives him a job selling mannequins and cosmetics. After about a year, a year of this, he decided to go to Rome and try his luck at Chinachita. Because of his athleticism, he gets a job as a stuntman and graduates to small character roles. He also obtains, obtains work as a model. When the Spaghetti Western films began to flourish, he meets producer Manolo Bolognini, who is also Leonard Mann's uh, uh, producer who hires him into this film production company and changes his name to Peter Martell. Between 1962 and 1973, he participated in about 70 films in various roles uh, from supporting and some lead actor. His golden year was in 1967 when he appears in 11 films. Among, among the best known are Il Cobra, El Pianeta Errante, which is also known as The Wandering Planet, and Lola Cope, also known as Black Tigress, with Lola Falana. Martel was chosen as the leading actor in God Forgives, I Don't, but the day before his first shoot, he broke his foot during a fight with his girlfriend and was replaced by Terrence Hill. Uh, we'll talk about this a little bit later in, the, in this episode. Uh, he was replaced by Terrence Hill, and the partnership of Terrence Hill and Bud Spencer was created. Martell was also set to play Trinity when They Call Me Trinity was first announced, and George Eastman was to play the role of Bambino. The two characters were later portrayed by Terrence Hill and Bud Spencer once again, were then a popular comic duo. As the sp spaghetti western genre began to fade, so did Martell's career. By the mid-1970s, he had had enough and began to wander the world. After a long break in which he, was all, he almost poked out his eye, it was rumored he tried to commit suicide, which was false. During this time, he had several girlfriends and fathered two children. One was David Martellans and photographer Yuma Martellans. In 1994, he returned to his hometown town of Bolanzo, where he lived alone in a Volkswagen van. All but forgotten by the world of cinema, 
a documentary film about his life was made in 1997 called starring Peter Martel. This brought him to the attention of German filmmakers who were able to locate him and he was hired to participate in the German horror films Killer Barbies vs. Dracula in 2002 and Tears of Kali in 2004. Still a hero in Bolzano, he was given rent-free a small apartment to live in by the city council and the government gave him a retirement check to live on. In the Leonard Mann interview of last week's show, I asked him about Martel, and he said Peter did not take acting too seriously, but was a lot of fun, and several times they broke up laughing during scenes in the two westerns they made together. He was also known as to a favor uh, drink, and I believe, in my opinion, he basically acted in films as a way to make a living and didn't take acting too seriously. Martel was not one for learning lines and dialogue, so his films are filmed with action, which is all right for most of us. One of the leading Italian actors of the genre, he made his mark and will be remembered as a leading actor who was always fun to watch. Some of his better known films were Black Tigress in 67, where he played Ron, Rod Strader, Two Crosses at Danger Pass, where he, in 67, where he played Alex Kid Mitchell. Uh, in God Made Them, I Killed Them. In 68, he plays Don Luis de la Vega, also Rod Douglas. Uh, God Made Forgive You, Not Me. In 68, he plays Jack Smart. He stars in Ringo the Lone Rider in 68 as Daniel, also as Alan Blake and Captain Bly, and also Ringo. Forgotten Pistolero in 69, he plays Rafael Garcia. The Unholy Four in 69, he plays Silver. Also in 71, he plays the lead, and his name was Pot, but they called him Allegria as Kid Pot Potter, also Allegria. And his last spaghetti western was Patience Has a Limit. We Don't in 674, I'm sorry, as Bill Pupo McDonald. If you ever have a chance to find starring Peter Martell, uh, watch it. It was popped online at least a year or two ago. I don't remember if it was on YouTube or it just came up on uh, Facebook or on Google, but it's a hoot to watch and really dives into his uh, background. Uh, he's in it quite a bit as they interview him, and you can learn quite a bit about his career. He's not bashful in saying that he was not, didn't take himself seriously and why he made films and all his adventures and romantic interludes, but uh, it's very interesting. So if you get a chance to see it, Please do so. Now we'll move on to who are those guys? Okay, who are those guys? Remo Capitani. Renato Remo Capitani was born in Rome, Lazio, Italy on December 19, 1927. He appeared in some 300 films in a career as a stuntman, supporting, and character actor that began in 1959 and ended in 2004. <clears throat> During World War II, he was part of the Italian resistance fighters and a group known as the Happy Gang. He was made a prisoner of war by the Germans. He began his movie career in the 1950s as a stuntman and appeared as a rower in Ben-Hur when several of the original crew members had eaten too much at the cafeteria of Metro Golden Mayor. The sea waves at Anzio became rough and several became seasick. He was recruited to take one of the rowers' places. He was a double for Orson Welles as Dr. Jekyll in one of 13. When the spaghetti western genre replaced the peplum films, he could be seen in over 50 films of the genre from characters to supporting roles. Bearded or clean-shaven, he mostly portrayed Mexican bandits and is probably best remembered as the character Mezcal, the leader of the Mexican gang and they call me Trinity, who terrorizes the Mormons. Um, this character really launched his remaining career where he rivaled Fernando Sancho and Pedro Sanchez as a Mexican bandit leader. Remo, in later days, appeared in some American films made in Italy, such as Martin Scorsese's 
Gangs of New York, and Mel Gibson's The Passion of the Christ. Remo died on February 14, 2014, in Quartziola, a suburb of Rome. Um, I've got some uh, uh, trivia remarks made by Remo in an interview that he did. Apparently, he burned his hand severely during the filming of The Ballad of Ben and Charlie in 1971 after an accident and finished the film with bandaged hands. So if you see films with his hands bandaged, that's the cause. It's not part of the film itself. During the film of They Call Me Trinity, he had to stand in front of Bud Spencer in a scene that called for Bud to break bottles on Remo's head, which had to be real. They couldn't pretend. He had told Bud to really hit him behind the neck hard when he was within striking range. Then they broke 62 real, real bottles over his head and since the fake ones weren't ready while thought cutting him. On They Call Me Trinity, he says he witnessed how Hill and Spencer pairing was formed and why the real protagonist, Peter Martell, was replaced. This version differs from what Leonard Mann and others have reported. Remo says Peter was dating a hairdresser, and when his girlfriend arrived in Spain, uh, they were at the Grand Hotel, and he saw the whole scene. He was coming back from the set, Peter was, all dirty, and was climbing the grand staircase at the hotel when his girlfriend sees him. She utters a lot of cuss words and then starts throwing him his bags. To avoid a bag, Peter slips on a step and broke his foot. So it's up to you to decide which uh, version of how Peter Mattel broke his foot. But one way or the other, that's how he broke his foot and re replaced by Terrence Hill. On The Beast, another spaghetti western, in 1970, Capitani plays the role of the sheriff. He had two fights with Klaus Kinski on the, on the set. They fought on the rocks. In short, he says, one day I, I arrived on the set in Camarada Nuovo. It was the first day I was shooting and I hear screams. I think it's the wind because it's always windy up there. Then I got closer to the set and I hear the screaming like a madman. Kinski was mad at everyone and screaming profanity. No surprise. No one is saying anything to him. Then I don't see him anymore. He's a bigger star than me. And it's not so much who is making the money, but who gives you the bigger role. I had a Winchester. I put it on the ground. I walked slowly towards him with everyone telling me, stay still, Remo. Because they knew me, I got close to him. I grabbed him by the chest. He had on a cream colored suit. I held him to a rock and told him all sorts of things. Later, I had a second altercation with Kinski, and he eventually left the set. I'm going to post both uh, Remo and Peter Martel's uh, list of films on the Spaghetti Westerns podcast post on Facebook and also on YouTube. But some of Remo's bigger roles were in God Forgives, I Don't. He plays a bartender up to McGregor's. In 66, he plays a bandit. Don't Wait, Django Shoot, 67, he plays Alvarez. Face to Face in 67, he plays one of Taylor's henchmen. Sartana, 67, he plays Lieutenant Miguel. Today We Kill, Tomorrow We Die, he plays a bartender. Death Rides a Horse, in 68, he's a member of the Gold Escort. Once Upon a Time in the West, in 68, he plays a surveyor. In The Unholy Four in 69, he plays an asylum guard. Uh, they Call Me Trinity, he plays Mescal. The Grand Duel, he plays one of Saxon's henchmen and is billed as Ray O'Connor. Man of the East in 72, he plays a saloon brawler. And in his last uh, spaghetti western, the porno erotic western in 78, he plays a padre and a guy named Foote. Uh, again, uh, he's bearded in some scenes and unbearded in others. He's a bit difficult to recognize uh, unbearded. He looks completely bearded in the Mexican bandits that he plays. But that's Repo Camatani. Next, we're going to go to the film of the week. Okay, the foot of 
Film of the week is Beyond the Law. Uh, this was one that I had seen for years and never saw. It never showed on TV until late, and I didn't think it ever showed in the United States. Uh, finally, I got to see it, and it's one of Lee's lesser films, but he really gives a good performance in this because it's different from his other roles. He's not the hard-bit gunfighter that he is most of the time. This one, he's more like the, the character he plays in El Condor. Uh, the German title, this is a German-Italian co-production, is Die Letz, Rechnung, Zalst, Du Selbst. The Italian title is Aldila Della Lege. Uh, in the UK, it's called Blood Silver and The Last Villagers and The Outrider. Another good title in the UK it came out on is The Good Die First for a Handful of Silver. In the USA, it was came out as The Good Die First and the more common name, Beyond the Law. Uh, came out in 1967, uh, directed by George Finley, who's actually Giorgio Stagani. Screenplay, or the story was by Warren Kiefer, and uh, who's again, Lorenzo Sabatini. Screenplay is by Fernando De Leo, Mina Roli, whose real name is Erminio Pantalori, Pantaroli, I'm sorry, Warren Kiefer, Inge Hil Hilger, and Giorgio Stagani. Cinematography is by Enzo Serafin. It's in Technicolor and Technoscope. Music is by Rizor Alani. And there's a song in it, How Much You Miss Me, sung by Katina Ranieri. Cast is Billy Joe Cudlip, played by Lee Van Cleef. Ben Novak, played by Antonio Sabato. Burton, played by Gordon Mitchell. The Preacher, played by Lionel Stander. Al, played by Al Hoosman. James Cooper, played by Bud Spencer, unshaven. Sally Davis is played by Graziella Granada. Betty or Lola is played by Ann Smurter. And another face that pops up that's familiar to you would be Sheriff John Ferguson, played by Enzo Firmonti. Uh, this is available on Blu-ray only in Germany, came out in 2020. It is on uh, DVD in Germany, Australia, Argentina, the USA, France, Portugal, Brazil, Spain, and Italy. So it's pretty easy to find. Story goes, an outlaw named Billy Joe Cudlip, played by Lee Van Cleef, decides to change his life and become one of the good guys. He's befriended by a young Czechoslovakian named Ben Novak, played by Antonio Sabato, who is a manager for a mine which Cudlip and his two henchmen, Al, played by Al Hoosman, and Preacher, played by Lionel Stander, have just robbed the pi mine payroll from. Novak befriends Cudlip and convinces the citizens of Silvertown to name him sheriff. But Billy Joe finds him torn between the forces of good and evil. When the town is attacked by a gang of outlaws led by Burton, played by Gordon Mitchell, Cudlip must decide to either rescue the townspeople held as hostage for a ransom in silver or steal the booty and leave with Al and Preacher. The film is not packed with action and Lee Van Cleef performs against character. Like I said, he's more like the Jaru character in El Condor. And his relationship with Sabato and his buddies, Standard and Hoosman, take up the main plot. Slow in places, it's a different kind of Western film for Lee Van Cleef fans, but if you like Lee, it's pretty enjoyable. The appearance of Bud Spencer, as I said, is as an off afterthought, as his role is small and almost meaningless. Uh, this film tells the story of good and evil, and like a peck and paw film, the outlaws know their time is running short. Can they change with the times or fight against it? Cudlips decides one path, Alan Preacher another. They band together for different purposes and then stand against each other for another purpose. It all boils down to a predictable ending, which I won't divulge. Uh, some trivia. Ben Novak tells Cudlip he's from Czechoslovakia. Czechoslovakia was not a country until 1918. Clearly, this is a goof because the film obviously takes place in the 1800s. The mining office has a map of the United States on one of the walls. The map has modern state borders. At the time when the movie takes place, 
most of the West was still a series of territories consisting of multiple future states. As far as the bios are concerned, Lee Van Cleef, Antonio Sabato, Lionel Standard, and Bun Spencer bios have been covered in previous episodes, and Gordon Mitchell was covered in a planned future episode. We have touched on him, though, in the past. And we'll talk about Al Hoosman. Al Hoosman was born Al Hu Al Alston, A L S T O N Hoosman, in Waterloo, Iowa, on October 4th, 1918. He was a heavyweight Golden Gloves boxing champion in 1939 and was Joe Lewis's sparring partner at some stage and fought Lewis in an exhibition fight in California in 1948. Al enlisted in the U.S. Army in 1940 and served in the European arena during World War II. After the war, he remained in Germany. Al died in Munich, Germany on October 25th, 1968. He was only 50 years old. Al appeared as Toti in 1953 semi-Western, Johnny Saves Nebrador. Beyond the Law was only, his only true Euro-Western. Also appearing in the film is Sally Davis, played by Graciela Granada. Graziella Granada was born in Rome on March 30, 13, 1941. She was a CSC graduate who worked in theater and films, appearing in 30 films from 1959 until 1972. Now, remember, remember appearing in films, for if you're a CSC actor, means sometimes in name only. Being relegated to secondary roles, she dropped out of films and devoted a few years to the theater before retiring. She's probably best remembered for her performance in the 1962 film, Slaughter of the Vampires, Beyond the Law is her only European Western. And last but not least, we have uh, Betty, or slash Lola, played by Ann Smirner, born Rhodey, R-O-H-D-E, Nielsen, on November 13, 1934, in Fredericksburg, Denmark, she was the daughter of Pohl, P-O-U-L, Smyrna, born Gerd Henrietta Polson in 1899. He died in 1978. Anne was an author, theater, film, radio, TV actress. She trained at the Aarhus Theater School and was featured mostly in German and international films during the 1950s and 1960s, appearing in nearly 60 films and TV appearances before retiring in the mid-1970s due to illness. She allegedly practiced witchcraft for 17 years before announcing it in 1970. Smirgren died on August 29, 2016, in Benal, Medina, Andalusia, Spain. She was 81. Beyond the Law was her only Euro-Western. Okay, now we'll talk about CD of the Week. Okay, CD of the Week will cover the film we've covered today, which is Two Mafia of the West. And this one uh, came out from Italy in 2010. It's uh, on Digit Movies. It's from Italy. It's on CDDM 156. Contains two discs. The other disc in there is uh, Two Sergeants of General Custer. Uh, the composer on this one is Giorgio Fabor and Angelo Lavagnino. Uh, the first disc, which is the Two Mafia Men in the Far West, has 28 tracks. The two, Gen the two Soldiers of General Custer has 22. The total listing time is 2 hours and 13 seconds. As available, it's on Amazon. It still uh, bought, can be bought for like 22 bucks. Uh, since we can't play music on this because of YouTube, I figured I'll go over some of the uh, composers when I get a chance when we do the CDs. In this case, it's Giorgio Fabor, who did the soundtrack for the Two Mafia in the Far West. Giorgio Fabor was born Fabio Borghazi in Milan, Italy, on April 24, 1920. He majored in composition, conducting, and piano 
at Conservatorio Giuseppe Verdi in Milan. He played piano and later became an author. He started composing in films in 1950 and composed scores for around 20 films before he died on August 2nd, 2011 in Rome. This was his only spaghetti western. Okay, now we'll move on to the weekly news. Okay, if you want to learn more about some of the stuff I talk about in the weekly news, it's posted both on uh, my blog and on the uh, Westerns All Italia on a Facebook page. So I won't get into a lot of detail on some of this stuff. How I missed this one, I don't know. But back in October 9th, 2022, a new book on director Umberto Lenzi was published called Make Them Die Slowly, The Kinetic Cinema of Umberto Lenzi by author Troy Haworth. It's self-published. It's in English. Contains 487 pages. Uh, over the course of more than 60 feature films, Umberto Lenzi cemented his reputation as a prolific and diverse maker of popular entertainments. And yet, for many, he remains a marginal figure. Make Them Die Slowly, the kinetic cinema of Umberto Lenzi fills the gap in assessing Lenzi's place and importance in the wild landscape of Italian genre filmmaking. With so many of his best works finally getting the attention they deserve on home video, the time is ripe for an exploration of the work of a man who devoted his life and his passion for the cinema. As you know, Lindsay made a few spaghetti westerns, mostly uh, Jack London films. Uh, also this week, a new French Blu-ray DVD of Hanny Calder was released. It came out in 71, directed by Burt Kennedy and stars Raquel Welch, Robert Culp, Ernest Borgnine, Jack Elam, and Struther Martin. It was released by LCJ Editions on January 11th. It's Region B, uh, and it has DTS as HD French English languages. It has options with French subtitles with a running time of 95 minutes. Uh, no extras were at least mentioned in the release. Uh, also, in the uh, Boot Hill section, we have one passing. It's German actor and voice actor Lothar Blumhagen, who died in Berlin, Germany on January 10th, 2023 at the age of 95. Blumhagen was born in Leipzig, Germany on July 16th, 1927, and was the German voice of many international stars. His dark, rough timber was unmistakable and perfectly underlined the appearance of a British gentleman. Blumhagen also stood in front of the camera again and again for television, films and was also seen on theater stages. His family mourns the loss of a humorous, warm-hearted and generous father, father-in-law and grandfather. We will remember him as an open-minded art and literature enthusiast. Lothar voiced many European Westerns during his career. See my obit on the Westerns All Italiana blog dated January 10th or the weekly news on the Westerns All Italiana Facebook page for a complete list of his European Western dubbing credits, and they're uh, intense. Uh, now I want to get into some of the a few bits that we've missed since the departure uh, and end of season four and the beginning of uh, season five. Uh, these will just be major bits. Uh, the first one that came along was uh, on October 14th, and it was Rolf or Ralph Walter. Uh, German actor Ralph Walter died in Munich, Germany on October 14th. Uh, he was born in Berlin on November 26, 1926. Walter began his long career on the Berlin stage and in cabaret during the late 40s. He made his first film appearance in Die Frau das Ern S and quickly achieved prominence as an actor for, for comedic supporting roles. In 1961, he appeared as the bald-headed Soviet agent Borodenko in Billy Wilder's comedy One, Two, Three with James Cagney and Horst Buchholz. Another Hollywood film with Walter in a supporting role was Cabaret in 1972, where he played alongside Lisa Minnelli. 
Walter achieved his greatest fame as the eccentric but friendly trapper Sam Hawkins in the Winnetou films. Walter was married with his wife Edith from 1959 until his death. They had two children. So he was a, a supporting actor in several of the, of the Winnetou films. <clears throat> Next was Nico Fidenko, composer, who was born Domenico Cotarossi. He died in Rome on November 19th. He was also a singer and songwriter who was born in Rome on January 24th, 1933. Fidenko had a long and pre prestigious career and gained considerable popularity from 1960 onwards after the release of the song So Nel Cielo, which is What a Sky, included in the soundtrack of the movie by Francesco Maselli El Dafini and composed by Giovanni Fosco. With his angelic voice, he made millions of lovers dream not only in Italy, but all over the world. Singing dozens of songs in English as well, Fedinko composed scores for 13 Euro Westerns, including A Taste for Killing, Banditos, I Want Him Dead, The Texican, and Those Dirty Dogs. Next is uh, Lando Bazanco. He was an Italian comedian and actor. He died from dementia at the Via Speranza Clinic on December 18th. He was 87, the son of actor M. Padocle Mazanka, born in 1910, died in 1987, and ne nephew of actor Gino Bazanka, born in 1912, died in 1985. He left high school in Palermo when he was 16 and moved to Rome to pursue his dream of acting. He made a brief appearance as a slave in the 1959 film Ben-Hur. He would go on to become one of the great actors of Italian comedy in the 60s and 70s, who was spurned by comics but obtained great success with the cinema going public. After two successful James Taunt films, in which he played a parody of James Bond, starting from the late 60s, Bazanka had large success in a series of Italian satirical sex comedies which satirized major institutions such as politics, religion, trade unions, and financial world. With the de decline of the genre, he slowed his film activities focusing on theater and television in which he enjoyed a resurgence of popularity in the 2000s. Bazaka appeared in two Euro Westerns for a few dollars less in 1966 as Bill and Rebels on the Loose in 1966 as Private Chester Ringo. And also dying on the same date was Miss Palermo and Miss Italy as Daniello Giordano. She died in her hometown of Palermo, Sicily on December 18th. She was 76. The daughter of a banker, she embarked on a screen career after becoming Miss Italy in 66 and first appeared with Franco and Ciccio in Barbieri di Sicilia, The Barbers of Sicily. Her career consisted of over 50 films and TV appearances. She was married to photographer Emilio Lantini, and the pair lived a private life. Giordano appeared in nine Euro Westerns, Find a Place to Die as Juanita, Long Days of the Massacre in 68 as Paquita, 68 in a Men as Barbara, Five Man Army as Maria, Have a Nice Funeral, uh, and Four Gunmen of the Holy Trinity as Sarah, both in 70. And uh, his name was Pot. They called him Alegria. as a Mexican girl in 71. Stay away from Trinity when he comes to El Dorado as Juanita. And Trinity and Sartana, those sons of bitches, in 72 is Martha. And last but not least was Ruggiero Diodato the Italian screenwriter and director of the most controversial film in cinema history, Cannibal Holocaust. He died in Rome on December 29th at the age of 83. He was born on May 7, 1939 in Potenza, Basilicata, Italy. He leaves behind a varied filmography that includes thrillers, Concord Affair 79, Peplum's The Barbarians, and Melodrama's Last Feelings, but he was best known for his gory contributions to the horror genre, including the Giallo's Body Count and Phantom of Death. Ruggiero directed the 1969's In the Name of the Father, starring Paolo Villaggio. He also was an assistant director on Django 
and Ringo and his Golden Pisto, and Navajo Joe, all 66, the Hellbenders, and Wanted, both in 67. Okay, I've got a few posters to show you. So we'll talk about uh, that in Tom's Poster Attic. Okay, these are all from Beyond the Law. This is the German poster. I almost put Antonio Sabato in there as an afterthought, but you've probably seen that one a lot of times. This is the uh, Belgium. Then we have a Danish handout that was given to uh, theater goers when they showed up at the theater. These are really cool. Wish they'd do that in the States. And then, like I mentioned, uh, when I was talking about Beyond the Law, I thought it never appeared in the United States until I found a press book and bought that. And this wasn't probably until 10 years ago. And it was released by Worldwide Films, and it came out of Seattle. So at least it showed up in Seattle, Washington. Okay, that'll do it for today's episode. Have a good week, and we'll see you next week. This has been a Roberto Genesi production. Adios, amigos.